All right. So to implement the, if we want to implement the um, the sphere bounding volume, we need to know how to calculate the distance from a point to a plane. And again, like so many things in linear algebra, unlike uh, quaternions, uh, it turns out to be really simple. This is how we do it. First, we make a vector um, from any point on the plane to our test point. And the test point is the one that we're checking um, how far are you from the plane. So let's see if I can start drawing this out. This is my plane. It's a real plane, right? It goes off in every direction. Um, and here's my point zero. What's really cool about having a point on the plane is if we follow the previous definition I did where we, we, we a plane is a point plus a normal vector, um, then we already have that point. Okay, So we take a... Okay, and I'm going to actually draw up here. This is my point that I'm testing whether... Um, how far it is from the plane. So I take a point in the plane, that's P0, and I, I take a vector from that point to my test point. Okay, So I make this vector. I want to call this A. Why not? And then what I do is I project it. I project A onto the normal. At this point, I can say, yeah, and go check your linear algebra textbook. But it turns out it's so simple that I, I, I want to show it to you. I'll, move, I'll make a little bit more room for myself. Okay, So we project A onto the normal n. And then if we do a scalar projection, we get the length of it for free. So we take the length of the projection. The scalar projection. And that becomes gives us gives us our distance. As a reminder, what a projection is, here's my normal vector on the plane. A projection takes this in the direction of the normal. It's going to be orthogonal. And it says if I take my green vector and I squish it that way, how long will it be in the direction of n? Okay? How long will it be in the direction of n? And that tells us as you can see in the diagram, that'll be our distance d. So a projection takes this vector and says, well, if I project it onto the n, flatten it, how long is it? It turns out that it's a really simple calculation. This guy wants to move a lot today. So here, let me just draw this out. So I'm going to draw a. This is my vector a over there. And here's the vector n that I want to project it onto. And as you can see, even if n is short, um, you can get you just get a larger number. Like you'll get multiples of n, so n can be short. It's fine. I have an angle between those two, and I'll actually what I want is this length here. If I project a down onto n, I want to flatten it out, and I want to get that length there, which will be my d over here. Okay, and that's exactly what a projection does. It gives us that length. Now we can easily write this out. You know, the cosine of theta is um, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be d over length of a, right? And then we can just simply rearrange this to say, well, I want to solve for d, so my d is going to be cos theta a in front. Now the next, so. It's actually not hard, but we can even make it simpler. And that'll, you know, the length of a times the cosine will give us what we want. But we can actually make this simpler. Whenever you see a cosine, you should be thinking, dot product. Can I do the dot product here? Now remember, if I dot product, let's say a, and I dot product it with n, it's going to give me the length of a times the length of n times cos theta. Well, um, it turns out that n is normal. It's length 1, so we can get rid of that. So then the dot product of a and n is just this length of a times cos theta, which equals d. <laughs> Did you follow that? Look at it again. So if I want to project 
my point T, a distance of my point T. I get my vector A, I project it onto N, all I do is A dot product N, two multiplications and an addition, and I'm ready to go. So this is a very, a very simple calculation. All I do is I go, um, you know, yeah, A, which, um, let's try this again, D is going to be A dot product N. Now, of course, A is just T minus P dot product N, assuming N is normalized, right? Um, that'll work. And we're done. So if we want to see, test whether our sphere is um, intersecting or inside the plane or outside the plane, we just compare this result against um, the radius of the sphere and we're done. So really, really simple to get the distance from a point to a plane. We just need a dot product and a subtraction. Cool.